Hello, my friends. Hello, hello, hello. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Stoichiometry. Man, I forget which part, Ron. Maybe this is 6.3. That will go 6.3. 6.3. We're going to do some stoic with molarity. We're going to do some stoic with heat. So get your calculators ready. Get your periodic tables out and get ready to fire it right up. Here we go. All right. Um, so I've got copper sulfate solution, and I've got iron, solid iron. I get copper and iron 3 sulfate. So if 200 milliliters of 0.75 molar CuSO4 react, how many grams of Fe will I need? So notice this isn't moles and this isn't grams, so it's a wee bit different, okay? This has a starting point, so instead of going, the first thing we usually do is do grams to moles. Well, in this case, instead what we're going to do is we're going to do molarity volume to moles, okay? So we saw that in an earlier podcast, first one, I believe. So moles equals mv, molarity, times volume. And notice the volume has to be in liters. So to make this liters, I move the decimal over 1, 2, 3, 0.2. Okay? And that gives me 0.15 moles of CuSO4. Now we do our conversions like before. We want grams of iron, but I always go through moles. So I've got moles of copper sulfate. Hey, two moles of copper sulfate. Here, cancel. Okay? And I've got moles of iron on top. Once I have moles, on tire on, moles of iron on top, now that I'm in moles of iron, I can finally go into grams of iron. This number right here comes from the periodic table because little g means grams and little g means go to the periodic table. So again, what do we do? Moles equals mv, and that gives us moles of copper sulfate. That given amount of moles of copper sulfate go from moles of copper sulfate into moles of iron and then moles of iron into grams of iron. And then to put this in our calculator, uh, 0.15 times 2 divided by 3 times 55.85 is 5.56 grams of iron. All right. When 9.5 grams of iron react, what molarity of iron sulfate will form if the system is in 125 milliliters? Hmm. Okay, what molarity? Hmm. Um, I will go to moles, right, because I know I always go to moles, So, and then I'll use molarity equals mv. So start. We're going to give. We take our given and convert it to moles. We're always going to go through moles. So given is 9.5 grams of Fe. By the way, if this, this doesn't jump out to you, it's the same equation, okay? So I'm going from iron into Fe2SO4. So we'll see that mole ratio here in a minute. So I'm going to go into it. The given unit goes in the bottom, grams of iron to cancel it. Now I'm in moles of iron. To cancel moles of iron, I put moles of iron on the bottom. And I want to go into moles of Fe2SO4, which is our, our goal. So that's why normally I say, what are we looking for? And we want moles of Fe2SO4 taken three times. Um, but then I'm going to use moles equals mv. So I need the moles for this part. Okay. So here we go. 9.5. Should check. Divided by 55.85, check, divided by 2. 0. 0.0850 moles of Fe2SO4, take it three times. And I'm going to now do moles equals mv. So 0. 0.0850 equals molarity, which is what I'm looking for. And the volume is not 125, it's 0.125. I'm going to throw the unit liters in there to emphasize that I know that. So my 0.0850 divided by 0.125 is 0.680 molar. Nice. Okay, good. Cooking right along. Delta H tells you the heat absorbed or released for a balanced equation. Okay. So on this, I apologize. I swear this looked right a minute ago. Calcium carbonate is heated to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And you're given that the delta H is 178 positive kilojoules per mole. Delta H is positive, so that heat term goes on the left. Heat is required. Reactants gain heat. 178 is the coefficient for the calculation. So my we can treat this just like a coefficient. So I have 178 for a coefficient, kilojoules for my substance, even though heat is energy, not a substance, but that's it, okay? And it's balanced otherwise. So again, if I have NH4NO3, so looking at a different one with a negative delta H, 
you'll notice that you're still going to say you're going to put it on the right hand side, but it'll still be positive. Okay. So that negative 99 is going to be the coefficient for the calculation, but we're going to put it on the right hand side and it will be positive. So I suppose positive 99 is the coefficient. All right, so let's do it. Um, so, oh, let me just try and make this be a little bit formatted a little nicer. So calcium carbonate plus CaO plus CO2 and delta H is 178 kilojoules per mole. It doesn't matter that much where you put it because the number will still be the same. How many kilojoules of heat is involved in the above reaction if three moles of calcium carbonate were to decompose? Okay, so what happens here is my given is three moles of calcium carbonate. I know I'm going to put moles of calcium carbonate in the bottom. You hear me obsess about moles. Um, moles of kilojoules is a no-no. Um, moles is a number like a dozen. So you can't have a number kind of thing like that, like heat. So it's going to be a little different. Like it's an amount. Yeah, I guess you can have an amount of it. But you don't, do, you don't have moles of kilojoules. So you can't count the particles. Moles is a counting of the particles, and heat isn't a particle. That's the word I was looking for. So I still need an equivalency. I don't know why that big dot is right there, but my equivalency is 178 kilojoules is equal to one calcium carbonate. That's why one mole of calcium carbonate is 178 kilojoules. So I just do three times 178, and I make myself happy with a 534 kilojoules. It says how many kilojoules are heat absorbed? Five are involved, 534. How many kilojoules of heat energy is released? We're going to be. If 5.05 grams of hydrogen react with excess chlorine. We'll get into why it says excess chlorine, but if something's excess, we can ignore it. I'm going to start with my 5.05 grams of hydrogen. And of course, I'm going to go to the moles. Go to moles. Once I get into moles of hydrogen, remember my goal here is kilojoules. So I go into moles of hydrogen, I get out of moles of hydrogen, boom, boom, and I need a relationship between hydrogen and kilojoules, and the coefficients give that to me. 5.05 divided by 2.02 .02 times 185 is 462, 463, I like that better, uh, kilojoules. How many moles of HCl be produced if 2.5 moles of H2 reacts with excess chlorine gas. Oh, so we just got a, a simpler one to sneak it in here. So we're given 2.5 moles of H2, 2.5 moles of H2, and I'm looking for moles of HCl. This one's actually a little bit easier, believe it or not. So I'm going there. So I hate you moles of H2. Now I don't have to go into grams, okay? I want to go into moles of HCl, and since I've already been in moles of H2, I can go into moles of HCl. Moles let me transfer the identity of things. So I need coefficients because it's moles over moles. Two HCLs and one hydrogen. I can do that in my head even. 5.0 moles of HCL. Sneaking a little mole one in there. I kind of like it. All right. Okay. I've got a few more to do. How many kilojoules of heat um, is absorbed with 1950 grams of KCO3? 1950 grams of KClO3 times dividing bar. I hate you grams of KClO3. And I already forgot what I'm going into. Kilojoules of heat. So I'm going to write kilojoules here. I'll circle a whole bunch of times so I remember where to go. Grams of KClO3. And go through moles of KClO3. Little g means grams and little g means go to the periodic table. Potassium is 39.1. Chlorine is 35.45. Oxygen, three oxygens are 48. 39.1 plus 35.45 plus 48 is 122.55. And those numbers came from the periodic table. Now I'm in moles of KClO3, so I want to get out of moles of KClO3. And I want to go into kilojoules. But remember, I can't go into moles of kilojoules, so I just put kilojoules on top because there's a relationship here between KClO3, 2, and kilojoules, 156. So 1950 divided by 122.55 times 156 divided by 2 is 1241 kilojoules. All right. 
you know what? I keep feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. So I'm going to call it, man. I say that's enough. I'll do those in class because um, they're not any different. So let's just go ahead and do it and be done. Ten minutes. Oh.